disruptors and curious minds. Welcome to the Thinking on Paper book club where Jeremy and I and hopefully others soon dissect, explore, examine, speak about, question a book. And every week we explore a chapter. This week we are exploring chapter eight of the Nexus Augmented Thinking for a Complex World. Sad news, this is the last chapter. But good news, we have another book coming, so don't worry. Um, chapter eight, Jeremy, I think is it's bringing it all together in a in some way, like bringing, evaluating Nexus thinkers, what they are, what they do, what they can create, why brands need them, why the world needs them. What was your What was your big take on chapter eight? So chapter eight to me, I'm I'm going to read a quote that that I was really drawn to. Um, and I actually wrote above it a diagnosis. I wrote above it. Wow. Okay. You know, like doc, I'm going to call you doctor. Doctor Jerry. A, di a diagnosis. All right. Check this out. So this is from chapter eight in the book. We humans. What, what are, page? Sorry. Oh, I don't. I don't have the page okay. of okay. it. No, no um, so we humans are a collection of heuristics and biases intertwined with a misunderstanding of statistics and a general inability to think beyond linear systems. Wow. Like, can you, can you unpack that for me, please? And ooh, the audience? Yeah. So you think about like this, that's a diagnosis of, of why the problems in humanity uh, happen, like in one sentence, like this, this is a big sentence, Mark. So, all right. <laughs> so we're, we're a collection of heuristics and biases, right? So our experience feeds our uh, conceptual model, which we actually we'll be talking about in the next book, but feeds our conceptual model of, of how the world works. And once these heuristics, these shortcuts, right, in biases become beliefs, our ego comes in and we defend our beliefs, right? So that limits us, right? That really limits us. So taking that a step further, intertwine with a misunderstanding of statistics. All right. So when I think of, I almost think of this as a misappropriation of statistics, right? <laughs> so you have your biases you're going to go find statistics that confirm your biases. And this is confirmation bias that yeah. uh, Robert Cialdini has written about for years as a psychologist. But um, so taking, taking um, rough shot data to back up your biases, right? And then a general inability to think beyond linear systems, right? So this is the convergent side of our brain versus the divergent side. Convergent is predictable. You go... Mark, you do this thing, you will get this result. You go do this other thing, you get this result. Pay no attention to the man behind the curtain. Um, you know, don't think about anything to your left or your right. Follow the straight line, and hopefully, you can retire to the beach. Um, maybe knowing a little bit about yourself. Anyway, that's it. That, have you just described like? Is that a, a, when you speak of a linear systems? Have you just described a linear life? <laughs> So, all right. So, so to give this a little bit, so right to know you is a big thing uh, that that I do um, this this writing program that that I teach to create yeah. awareness and all of that kind of stuff. There, there is a like I use the reference uh, of a conveyor belt. So think of like this conveyor belt that we all jump on, you know, in first, second grade, or whatever you whatever it's called, wherever you are, you're grouped by your age, and you go through. You're given a set of tasks, then you get an attaboy check mark and you move on to the next set of tasks you move through school move through your first job your second job and that sort of thing it's ingrained that linear process is ingrained so i i think really to to unlock nexus thinking you need to think about that and think about these biases and think about what you're what you've been told and be open to what you could be told i love that a couple of other daniel kahneman thinking fast thinking slow that's another book that anyone's watching this should be reading uh farnham street Shane Parrish has just written a book on mental on men mental models and biases. I think they're really very relevant. Um, speaking of conveyor belts, I'm I'm reading um, the Monkey Wrench Gang, and I'm all for destroying conveyor belts right now. So, okay, all right, you um, have to tell me more about that one. It's it's a freaking awesome book. Um, I want to. I know that you've been studying the map compass metaphor that Julio speaks about, and I want to get to that. But I think that might come in useful with. Um, his interpretation of leadership. Now, hands in the air, wave them around like you just don't care. I'm not a leader. So I'm going to read what he says. And maybe if we get some input for some leaders, brand leaders, team leaders, 
Um, he calls leadership vision plus communication plus execution. Um, and then he outlines more of that. And I think that the map compass metaphor is for leaders. Maybe there's some kind of interlink between these two ideas. Maybe you could explain the map compass metaphor for us, Jeremy. And then do you do you agree with his um, definition of leadership? Yeah, I th I think I would I think I would tend to agree with that. I think I think it follows in with this divergent thinking, convergent thinking uh, mentality as well, where you have managing versus leading, right? Management versus versus leadership, and management is more on once once the once the creative issue has been solved, once the once the direction has been determined, and you go from this convergent or di divergent mindset to the convergent mindset then it becomes managing upon execution, right? So it's almost like a project management. If we like simplify it, right? You get the scope of the project. You have a manager that makes sure it comes in on time and budget. As, we, as they say, who they say in managing is guidance in stable environments. Ooh, that's, that's really good, right? So manage, you know, guidance in stable environments, meaning there's only a couple of things that could, could try to knock that thing off the track, but nothing, you know, holistically game changing, right? So, leadership is guidance in complex environments. Yeah. As there's that complex and complicated thing kind of coming back again in this emergence, em emergence versus hierarchical theme that comes up in our show all the time. Right. Um, yeah. I think the compass is interesting. The analogy of a compass is interesting. Right. But I would, I would push, and I think I want to talk to Julio about this. We're due to catch up anyway, is ask him like in a compass, there's a true north, right? It's magnetic you know, magnetic north, there's a, there's a physical system that drives the compass. Yeah. What is the magnetic north in somebody's compass? And he talked about the idea of the leader having a feel for what that true north is, but also organizationally, what is that true north by getting inputs from people all across the, co uh, the company? Again, more challenging, but that's how you create that alignment, that attunement, I think, right? It, well, it, on a, a very small scale, that's kind of what me and you are doing with the Thinking on Paper brand book that we're writing at the moment. We're trying to ascertain our true north, our compass, so we can use that compass to um, <clears throat> power forward. And I think a, a lot of brands don't know what their true north is. They don't know what their what's driving them on any kind of deep and meaningful level. And many do, of course. So with the brand book as an example of thinking on paper brand book, if we were approaching it from a, um, from a convergent perspective and, you know, we were trying to, you know, one of us was trying to be the manager versus the leader, right? You know, we would say, I would say, Mark, this is our vision. This is what we're doing. Bam, jump on board or get off the boat. Right. Um, but I think the leadership approach, I think it, there's more of a spectrum I think of leadership. I've thought about this a lot. I, I did a whole year long research and writing on DAOs, and, you know, for, for one publication. It was fascinating because I decentralized landed... autonomous organizations for our non blockchain, non web three uh, listeners. Thanks for the, thanks for the clarity. The, the <laughs> idea, the idea on that is like this spectrum of leadership. Cause some days Mark for thinking on paper, some days you're, you're running, you know, your, your idea is taking, you know, taking the momentum. And I, I've basically been like, yeah, Mark, it's a great idea. Let's run with it. And then conversely, you let me in certain cases, oh, let's follow Jeremy's lead on that. So I think if you can find a way to identify some sort of spectrum of leadership, especially in small teams, um, and then that can maybe accelerate to larger teams, instead of being told what to do, you feel like you're a part of figuring out what there is to do. I like that. Is spectrum leadership? Have you just made that up, or is that something that exists? Because yeah. it, sound, it sounds like it definitely. If it doesn't exist, it should exist. I like the idea of yeah, you know, a spectrum of leadership, um, especially in small teams. Yes, um, I think there'd be a the flow of information, the flow of ideas, the flow of creativity, the flow of direction might be might be clearer. Um, a what? Mooks, I, I, was, I don't know if you want to spend too much time on Mooks. I like you, he speaks a lot about Mooks. Maybe that I don't really have much knowledge of Mooks. I think you might. Maybe it's something we could massively open online course. Is that? Yeah. Yep. And, and anything there? I mean, 
I think the access, I think, I think just the accessibility to understanding and learning the things you want to learn as a, as a curious nexus thinker, um, good inputs equal good outputs. So if the more like microsystems you can understand the, the more macro, um, systems you understand, because, you know, if you understand complex networks, right, like, you know, chaos theory, like those are, those are classes that I, I would have loved to have taken, uh, back in the day, but I just didn't understand that and, and know that that was something that's going to power the world and networks and all of that kind of stuff. Um, so accessibility of information is there once you know what you want to study. Okay. Um, <laughs> I think that, um, so my take home of Nexus thinking there's, I don't have one take home, one piece of information. He, he speaks a lot in this about kind of whole brain thinking and <laughs> a funny little anecdote with whole brain thinking. I do it. To, to, to get into the zone sometimes i do like single nostril breathing you know breathe through your left side oh, of your yeah. nostril, activate the right side of your brain breathe through the right activate the left side of the brain and i used to do this but i didn't actually i wasn't sure which side of my brain was my creative side and which part was my con convergent like analytical side so i'd do some not single nostril breathing and then think hold on am i which side am i activating here i'll have to change and i'll do the other nostril and hence whole brain thinking there's a hack if you want well then then you got to think about if you're breathing on the right side brain. if you're breathing on the right nostril are you activating the left side of your brain yes. and vice versa so right yeah yeah, yeah yeah but which side is the creative side i i, I always i can never be sure that's that's an interesting that's an interesting <laughs> hack to get there i like it i do a lot of breathing work to kind of attune and set man i think i think that's 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 a good way to kind of think about it. That's not going to play on the Nexus playbook when I, when I'm paid by Nike to go and speak to their teams about Nexus thinking. I just sit the team down and go right. We're going to do some whole brain. No, you have to you <laughs> single have to. nostril breathing. You have to. Yeah, I think I, I don't know. So so talk about like yeah, it's hard to have one big takeaway. But how is this book? Um, how is this book lit up? areas of your brain that maybe weren't lit up or what is, what, what, what do you want to do now that you've seen some of the stuff in this book? What are your actions taken away, uh, post reading this? Um, from a personal level, there's many things I'd say first, my, my knowledge of art and technological history is very limited. So I'd like to go through it and pick 10 or so names from the book that I find really interesting what they did. Um, I'd like to, exp you know, maybe that's Bauhaus or some of, more of the sculptors from the Renaissance or some musicians. There's a lot of people name reference in here. have done amazing things. And I thought, I don't really know what these people are doing. So I'd like to do from a personal project, you know, improve my historic history of some of those things. For me, the biggest take home, for my job is the creativity how to think about creativity how to access creativity how to how to put things aside how to think about the different things in my creative journey so that um i think this book also ties in with a i know creativity is a bit vogue at the moment isn't it? it's of the moment so there's a lot of other books out there so maybe to read some of those um pay more attention to the, the the artistic side of technology and science like i i'm very guilty of at the beginning of the book he lays out you know science is very cold and very analytical and very structured and well it isn't so that's something that has my eyes have been opened to that amazing amazing and i'll, I'll give you one last thought just on on my side of the fence i've been um inspired by this book greatly because I think I've been a Nexus thinker for a really long time, but never have understood how to um, how to explain that to folks and what the value of that is, because the society in general rewards um, very specialized uh, means of operation, which we need specialists to to do what we want to do in the world. But I think we also need Nexus thinkers to organize the vision and get all of those individual specialist compasses aligned to the compass of what that company wants to build. So I was very inspired by it so much so that I've actually already pitched teaching a course on Nexus thinking to uh, a couple of friends of mine. So Julio, we're going to talk about that 
Um, but uh, I've really enjoyed it. I've enjoyed unpacking this, uh, Mark, with you and look forward to the next book. Yeah, and we should maybe get Huli on and talk about the book. Uh, yeah, kill the niche. Stop niching down. Everyone, stop niching down. The word niche needs to be extracted from our vocabulary and jettisoned into space. So, yeah, thank you, Jeremy. It's been awesome exploring the Nexus with you. It's been, yeah, fascinating learning experience. And for everyone who's listening still, go to Thinking on Paper. Dot xyz you can see all of our incredible shows the book club will be on spotify soon and we have the next book so stay tuned stay disruptive stay keep thinking on paper i believe is our sign off jeremy now i love it see you soon guys bye <laughs>